Hello, friends. Give people a few seconds to tune in. We are doing something a little bit special today. Uh, so hopefully you tune in and check this out. Um, you know, in light of kind of everything that is going on right now, we thought, why not take some time to just hang out and kind of cook together and do a little bit of that. So hopefully this provides a little bit of a break um, in everything. And we can talk a little bit about what's going on at the store level because there's been some changes. If you've been paying attention to our social media this morning, you'll see that we had posted some things. Um, so we just wanted to kind of bring you up to date and let you know what we've got going on. So I'm gonna start with that. We'll get uh, talking a little bit about that. So first and foremost, uh, you know, in light of everyone's safety, both our staff and our customers, uh, we've decided to go to a curbside delivery format, uh, or curbside order and delivery. So for those of you who know and watch these regularly or see our posts, um, we do offer um, free online ordering and we offer uh, delivery through a service called Mercado, um, which you can do right through our website at coastalseafoods.com. So if you want, you can go place an order there and you can come pick it up at the store. Um, one of our coworkers, uh, retail staff will bring it out to you and then you can just take it and go. Um, otherwise, if you want, you can come down to the store. Our retail staff member will come out to your car We'll take your order, we'll go inside, place that order, and get everything squared away from you. So we are offering those options. If you do need to get some fresh food of some kind, we're definitely here trying to accommodate that. We're also working out some other things, which we'll talk about a little bit uh, more uh, as I learn more about them. So definitely stay tuned throughout the week for more updates on things. Uh, but for now, for the week, we're gonna try to do these Facebook Lives like we do every Tuesday at one o'clock. I'm gonna try to do one every day this week. Um, just to try to give people some space to just breathe and hang out and, and talk about food. So if you have questions about stuff, now is the time to ask. We're also going to go a little bit more long form, uh, which will be fun, I think, give you opportunity to watch and join and all that stuff. Um, these will also be posted to YouTube later so you can watch them retroactively and maybe learn some things. So why not make this kind of a learning moment? The other thing is um, we are also doing right now for all orders over $50, um, whether it's pickup or delivery, however. Um, we actually have these uh, Pratana olive oils, and you will get one of these for free with every order of $50 or over. So this is a really great olive oil, normally sells for $17.99. Um, good stuff, but you can get one for free, again, if your orders are over 50 bucks. Anyway, let's do some cooking. So today, I figured we'd do one of at least a variation on one of our more popular recipes on our website, which is our uh, halibut with a spring risotto, which is usually done with asparagus. Um, so I'm gonna do a variation on that today. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, back here on the stove, I've got simmering already, just some chicken stock. Um, and I've just gotten this warm, because we need to start with warm stock. So I'm gonna go ahead and move these out of the way for the time being. And I've got a few things here. This is the stock I'm using. This is the Sonetto chicken broth. You can use any sort of chicken stock that you have, whether it's homemade, box, can. This stuff is great, works well in a pinch, so definitely um, good to have on hand. Uh, we've got our arborio rice, which is an Italian rice. Uh, this is what you use to make risotto. This is a beautiful short grain rice that's full of starch. And it's what's gonna really uh, release itself to help make that sauce kind of nice and creamy. So this is what we want for that. And then just a few other things. Uh, we've got a little shallot, we've got a little white wine, and today, since I don't have any asparagus on hand, uh, I'm gonna use a little bit of kale, because uh, this recipe is actually quite versatile. You can do a lot of different things with it, uh, and use kind of whatever you've got on hand in terms of uh, vegetables. So I'm gonna go ahead and move my oil off to the side here and I am going to take my shallot, which I'm just gonna nip. Let me move some of this stuff out of the way so people can see what's going on a little bit better. And remember, feel free to ask questions. We're definitely opening this up for any questions that you have. I've got my uh, spare phone here that I am checking, so ask away. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start by just kind of working on the shallot. I'm gonna dip off the end, 
and I'm going to peel it, leaving this root end intact. This is going to make it easier to mince. I'm just going to peel off this first kind of outer layer, because sometimes that can be a little bit weird and gummy. So we'll get rid of that. And then what I'm going to do is lengthwise down the shallot, I'm just going to make some small cuts. And once I've got those cuts, I'm just going to go ahead and run through with my knife like so until I've got a fairly nice small little mince here. Do the same thing with this half. Pretty easy to start. All right, so I've got my shallot all ready to go. So, and my pan is heating. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit this with a little bit of the olive oil. And I'm gonna add my shallot to that pan and get that started. So that's what we want as soon as it hits. I'm getting that nice kind of sizzle sound, which is perfect. And let's check the comments here, see if we got anything going on. Uh, again, feel free, ask away, here to answer questions and cook. So today we are doing, again, the simple risotto. And all I'm doing now is sweating off some of these shallots in some olive oil. And let that go. Grab my garbage can here so I get rid of some of this stuff. Now, while that's going, I'm going to go ahead and open my bag of rice. like so. And these are already starting to soften up pretty well, which is exactly what I want. We're not looking to really put any color on these. All we're looking to do is get them nice and soft. Again, this is coming together pretty well here. So I'm going to add in some of my rice now. I'm going to do roughly about a cup, cup worth of rice. And I'm going to start toasting this. I'm going to get rid of some of this rice that I spilled on my board. And what we want to do is we just want to start toasting this rice a little bit. And that's going to help open it up and be more, uh, be better able to take the stock that we're going to add to it. So, it looks like I'm dying here on my flame. So I'm going to switch back over here. Go back here little bit closer to the stock anyway. So again, I've got my rice toasting. This doesn't take too long. Again, you don't want the rice to get brown or anything like that. Uh, you just want it to start to lightly toast. Uh, and you want all of those grains of oil, uh, rice covered, coated in the oil to make sure that things are toasting evenly. So again, I've got this going pretty well. And what you're going to see is the ends of the rice will start to come a little bit more translucent, a little less white, but the middle of that rice will still have a hard white center. And that's kind of what we're looking for here. Again, you don't want to char the rice, you don't want it to get brown, so you want to keep it moving just like so. So we're getting to a point where we're pretty good here. In fact, Turn down my heat just a little bit. It's really like a medium heat is pretty good here. Uh, we don't want to rush this or anything like that. And yeah, so we're coming along good. So I'll kind of show you what I'm looking at here briefly so you can see. We've got kind of our white rice there. It's starting to turn just a little bit golden from the olive oil. The ends are starting to become a little bit more translucent, but it's still pretty white in the middle there, which is exactly what I want. This is exactly the point where we can start adding in some of our stock, which we're just going to do kind of ladle by ladle. So I'm going to take one ladle full of this chicken stock, and I'm going to add it to that risotto. Again, you can see my heat's pretty hot here, so I'm going to turn it down just a little bit. Because we need to give this time for those starches to develop. So that's kind of what we're working on here. Uh, right now we are cooking up 
a really nice kind of springtime risotto. So this is based off of a recipe that is on our website that's been pretty popular since we posted it, I don't know, a year or two ago. Um, it's kind of become a go-to for a lot of people. Um, so what we're going to do is this kind of nice spring risotto, late winter spring risotto, with a really nice piece of roasted halibut. Um, again, this is just a very popular recipe from our website. You may have seen it. Um, I will also share the link to the recipe uh, in the comments after we're done streaming today. So that will be available to you. Uh, but this is just such a great springtime dish. So now what's happened is a lot of my stock has been absorbed by the rice, which is exactly what we want. We've cooked this down to a point where it's gotten nice and starchy here. Let me see if I can tip it without spilling. And I can drag my spoon through and all of the sauce comes with it because it's starting to thicken, or all of that chicken stock. So that means we're ready to go ahead and add some more. So basically you just keep doing this until your rice is nice and al dente. And that means that it's tender, but it's still got a little bit of texture to it. You don't want to completely obliterate the rice and turn it into mush. So we're going to keep standing over here and stirring very gently while this just does its thing. Again, it's going to sort of slowly absorb over time, which is nice. And then, well, that does its thing. I've got a little bit of kale here. Now, again, this is great for anything you've got on hand. If you have asparagus, use asparagus. That's what I use in the recipe. Uh, if you don't have asparagus, don't use asparagus. If you have frozen peas, those will work great here. Again, I've got a little bit of fresh kale that we just happen to have on hand, which I'm just going to give kind of a rough chop to. Again, pretty simple, nothing crazy. Um, any kind of green would really work in here. Even like if you had some leftover arugula, that would be nice. Um, just lots of different stuff. And also, because I don't want to waste, I've got these kale stems, which are pretty hard. Um, and normally you would just discard these. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut them kind of small. And I'm going to throw them into my rice a little bit early so that they start getting a little bit tender. And these will cook down and be just fine. So again, we're trying to not waste what we've got. Just use everything that we can, which is fantastic. So I'm going to go ahead and take this. And I'm just going to add it to my rice. And that'll give that time to sort of cook down, get tender, and just become kind of part of our risotto. Again, this is really already coming together very, very nicely. The rice is turning nice and white like we want, and it's absorbing that stock really well. Uh, the other thing we want to add, and really, don't judge me too harshly, this should have gone in a little bit earlier, uh, but we've got a little white wine that I'm going to add to this. Now, the white wine generally you would do when you add uh, the rice. After you add and toast the rice, you would add a little bit of white wine and start cooking that out. It doesn't really matter. It's going to cook out here as well. It's going to have enough time to sit and simmer. So it should be, should be all good. Again, we're starting to look pretty nice here on this. So let's talk, well this does its thing, a little bit about the star of the show, which is our halibut. We've got some beautiful halibut here. This stuff um, is our previously frozen halibut. However, this weekend marked the launch of fresh Pacific halibut season. So one of these days soon, we should be starting to see fresh halibut come back in. So definitely pay attention and watch for that. Uh, this is a beautiful fish. Uh, this is a, just absolutely gorgeous. and cooks up beautiful for this kind of thing. Uh, but when we're prepping fish, we always want to make sure that we pat it dry first. That's going to help get that nice, beautiful, kind of golden brown sear on it. So I'm just going to go ahead and pat this with a paper towel, get it nice and blotted. And then I've got my salt here. I'm going to go ahead and just season that with a bit of salt. So keeping this pretty simple, again, we're going for, for pretty classic here. 
um, but also super flavorful. Again, this is such a great thing to, to make. I know a lot of people are scared of risotto, um, and there's a lot of myths about how it's super hard to make. You gotta stand there and stir and stir and stir and stir and stir for hours and hours and hours. Well, that's not really true. It takes about 20 minutes, and yeah, you do wanna continue stirring because that's gonna help develop that stock. But as you can see, I'm kinda of walking away from it from time to time and just checking back on it, giving it a couple stirs every now and again, and we're still gonna wind up with a nice, creamy, delicious risotto. So it's, it's not as hard as it seems. You can do everything else you need to do while it cooks. Um, let's move this out of the way since it's not working right now. And yeah, let's give you a little shot of what we're looking at now. Again, you can see that chicken stock is thickening up nice. It's getting good and creamy there, which again is exactly what we want. You know, we're not quite to the pull away stage yet. So I'm going to leave this on the heat and let that continue to kind of reduce and cook down. And if it seems like it's taking too long or you're having some issues, just adjust your heat a little bit. Uh, sometimes risotto is one of those things, I will say, uh, as easy as it is to make, but sometimes you just gotta adjust your heat. You know, as you go, turn it up a little bit. If it's getting too much, turn it down a little bit. Um, that'll help, you know, kind of speed things along a bit. But again, you don't wanna rush this. You wanna take your time. So we're looking for just a nice, beautiful, silky finished product. And again, we're coming along really nicely here. So I think what I'm gonna do is I think I'm gonna go ahead and add a bit more of my chicken stock. And give that a few little whirls. And now is a good time to give this a little bit of a seasoning. Now, with the seasoning on a risotto, sometimes you wanna be a little bit careful uh, if you plan on finishing your risotto with, say, Parmesan cheese, right, uh, which is a very classic way to finish a risotto, uh, you want to go light on the salt because the parm is going to add more salt to it. So again, you want to kind of be careful about how you approach that um, and just sort of take your time. Uh, if you want, you know, you can always taste your stock for seasoning uh, as you go. Again, our rice is starting to tender up just a little bit, which is great. We are reaching a pretty good point. So, any questions so far what we got going on? We've got our risotto working, we've got our warm stock. So, uh, good thing to know, when you're making risotto, the reason I have my stock warming, you could do this right from the box um, and add your stock that way, however, stock tends to, the rice tends to absorb warm stock better, which is why I tend to put that on the heat and let that go. Plus, if you were doing, say, a classic uh, risotto milanese, which is basically a saffron risotto, which you've seen uh, some of our recipes for, you would follow the same basic procedure, except when you put your stock on the stove, you would add some threads of saffron to that and let that saffron bloom in that stock and turn that stock nice and golden. And then you would do this. And that gets you that beautiful golden risotto that everybody loves so much, including myself. So again, very, very nice. We are cooking up very well here. So, any other questions? We've got, again, we've got our fish that I've just pre-seasoned here. I've got my right, uh, Right. I've got my kale here uh, ready to add to my risotto, which I'm going to do here pretty quickly because, again, we are nearing a pretty good spot because uh, we do want the kale to cook and kind of wilt into the risotto. Um, kale is very, very, very hearty, so I'm not worried about it kind of turning to mush in the risotto. If you were using asparagus, say, you would wait until that rice was very near done because you're basically just looking to warm through that asparagus um, and not not cook it until it's obliterated. So I would wait until I was about two thirds of the way, which you're gonna know by tasting and testing as you go. But at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and add in my kale. Because again, I think we're at a pretty good spot where this has enough time to temp get tender and do what I need it to do. Because uh, essentially at this point, we're kind of braising the kale in the risotto. 
I'm starting to thicken up pretty good here again. So this is a good time to add in a little bit more of my stock. Another kind of half ladle. So when it comes to risotto and stock amounts, you know, it's going to kind of, for me, it seems to vary from time to time when I make it. And how much you're making, you know, kind of the whole deal. Um, so usually I use about a quart's worth when I'm making risotto. And you're looking gorgeous here. So again, let me do a little, little show and tell action. So, and it's starting to smell very aromatic. So I've got this here. Again, you can see it's getting very creamy. Um, that stock is starting to thicken up from the starch of the rice. We've got that risotto going. Uh, we've got our stock going still. And it's smelling gorgeous. You can smell those shallots. You can smell that white wine cooking off. Absolutely beautiful. Um, this is just such a great thing. I make this a lot at home. Again, it's just kind of a perfect, very comforting sort of dish. Um, and again, it's so versatile. You can do so many things with this. Um, highly, highly recommend it. goes well with all kinds of different seafood. Um, you know, mushroom risottos with heartier fish is always nice. Um, that would even be nice with this halibut. Uh, if you wanted to do mushroom risotto, you know, what I would do is maybe throw in some mushrooms right away with your shallots and kind of saute those off, then add your rice, uh, and then save some for later. You know, I would throw them in probably, again, just like with the asparagus, when it's about, you know, maybe two thirds of the way there is really the way to go. So I'm starting to look pretty good. So what I want to do now is I want to give this a little bit of a taste test to see where my rice is at. Just a couple minutes away. That's delicious already. Super good. The rice is still a bit tender. All right, it's still a little bit tough, but it's definitely getting tender, which is exactly what I want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my stock over to another burner, and I'm going to start getting my pan ready for my fish. So I'm going to heat this up here. I'm going to just let this start coming to heat a little bit. It'll take a few minutes to sort of come together, which is fine. And then I'm going to hit it with a little olive oil. Uh, and I'm going to do this fish in the olive oil. It's already starting to get pretty hot. This rice is working pretty hard here. So to slow things down a bit again, I'm going to go ahead and cut my heat down a bit. Because again, this is going pretty fast the point where I'm going to add just a touch more stock. I don't need too much more. One of the things I love about cooking risotto is how much control you really have over it as you go. Um, again, if you have extra stock, you can always put it into a Tupperware and let it cool, put it in your fridge, and use more later for something else. So it doesn't really matter if you're using too much. Um, you just kind of add until that rice is as tender and creamy as you want. And it's, it's pretty flexible. All right. So I've got my pan going. I'm going to add my olive oil to it. And I'm going to add my fish. Now, when you add fish or anything to a pan, really, you want to make sure that you lay it down and away from you, like so. And you can hear it start to sizzle right away. That's exactly what I want, because I want that really nice browning to occur on the fish. And when it's in there, I'm going to go ahead and season the back side here, just like so. And I'm going to let that just sort of develop a crust. So to finish our risotto, we're going to want to finish it with a little bit of a fresh lemon. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to cut some lemon wedges here. 
And these are pretty seedy, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut kind of the ends off of them. If you do that, like so, usually the seeds of the lemon are kind of close to the center. So if you cut off this center piece, you'll wind up with a seedless lemon that you can use to juice without much issue. It's a good little trick for cocktails, a little service industry trick. Yeah, very easy. I'm gonna cut a couple extra for garnish as well. And we have lemon. Let's check our risotto here. Okay, looks like we're coming along pretty nicely. Simmering away and that rice is still just taking in all that beautiful flavor. It's exactly what we want. What I'm gonna go ahead now is I'm gonna check my fish and see how my stuff is developing. That's beautiful. I'm gonna give it just another minute or so to kind of finish doing that. While I work my risotto. And I'm at the point where I want to give it another taste test. I'm gonna grab a new spoon. And this is looking nice and creamy. Let me show you what I'm looking at here. Let's see if I can get it in focus. So again, it's really nice and creamy. That starch has really developed and turned into more of a sauce. Absolutely delicious. Tons and tons and tons of flavor. Give my hands a little wash here. Jam. It's everything happening when you're cooking with your family. You want to make sure that you're staying good and scrub. show you kind of what I'm looking at with my fish here. So this is just the top side that's cooked, but you can see it's got that beautiful golden crust. This is exactly what we want. So I'm going to add this back to the pan and just let it cook for another, I would say minute, maybe two, because it's very, very near done. Again, we talked about this a little bit before, so when cooking fish, one of the things I like to do is cook that fish about two-thirds of the way on one side, and then flip and just finish on the end. So however long you cooked it on the first side to kind of get it where you want, um, flip, and then give it about a third of that amount of time. So again, two-thirds on one side, one-third on the bottom, and you're gonna come up with a really, really nice, beautiful fish. Now again, obviously that's going to depend on your heat level, that's going to depend on the thickness of the filet. There's a lot of factors that kind of play into that. But we are looking great here. This risotto is beautiful. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to move over here to my cutting board. And I've got some butter because butter makes everything better. And I'm going to hit this with a pretty generous tablespoon or two of butter. And it's at this point, whereas if you were using Parmesan cheese, this is where you would put it in. Uh, fresh grated is best, just do fresh grated right into that pan. And we're gonna go ahead and just kind of work it into there. We want that butter to sort of emulsify into that sauce and create something just really beautiful and decadent. And you can see it's already coming together. It smells amazing. I know people are watching and being like, kale, that's kind of boring, but I promise you this is delicious. Uh, this is a great way to use kale if you have it. Uh, but again, this dish was written for asparagus, which we're gonna get kind of that texture from uh, with the kale stems that I put in there. So remember, the kale stems I chopped pretty finely earlier and put those in. So I'm gonna give this a few nice squeezes of lemon. This is gonna add a little acidity to the party, kind of wake it up. Because again, right now it's pretty hearty and pretty rich. And we want some of that to sort of come back to life. That is gorgeous. 
turn off my fish, just kind of remove it from the heat here. My risotto is looking absolutely beautiful. So what I'm going to do, is I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to plate it up, right on the plate. A few nice big servings here, and this is perfect. And again, when we've talked about risotto in the past, you know, you should be able to give it a little bit of that shake test. Uh, and it should be creamy enough to kind of spread out on that plate. That's exactly what we're looking for. I'm going to add a little bit more here. Again, this is looking good. I'm going to give a little bit more kale. And shake, 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 shake. I got a little bit off the rim, which is fine. Go ahead and wipe that down. And now what I'm going to do, I'm going to take my lovely piece of halibut here. I'm going to lay this right on top. Again, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful fish dish. Super easy to make. And you just watch me make it in real time. I'm going to go ahead. Let's garnish with a couple of these lemons just for fun. And there we go. So let's show off what we made. Look at that. It's beautiful pan roasted halibut with that really nice risotto. And again, this is great for whatever pantry items you have on hand. Um, you know, if you have cans of peas or green beans or anything like that, you can easily throw that in here and have a really nice, beautiful dish. Um, and you watch me make this all in real time, 100% from scratch. And it didn't take that long. Again, there's a lot of myths with risotto that you have to stand and work and work and work and work, and then it takes three days to make. It's not true, it does not take that long. It takes about a solid 20 minutes from start to finish. So again, very, very easy. Um, and again, I'll post this recipe. Uh, we do have it on our website um, for the pan roasted halibut with the asparagus risotto. But again, asparagus, you don't have to use it if you don't have it, you can use really anything you've got on hand. So very nice plate of food. This is great for your family, great for friends, whatever you're doing right now. Uh, if you're under uh, self-quarantine or social distancing or whatever, um, you still gotta eat well. So this is a good way to do that. Um, just to kind of reiterate some of the things I went over at the beginning, um, in case you kind of tuned in late, um, at the store level, we posted today that we are going to um, curbside, curbside order taking and online orders and delivery. So if you want, you can go to our website, coastalseafoods.com, click on the online order slash delivery button, and you can place an order for either pickup, which when you come to pickup, you'll come, one of our staff will come out, reach you, and then they'll go, they'll take your name, they'll go grab your order and they'll bring it out to you, and then you can go on your way. Um, for delivery, obviously, if you live in the area, whether it's 16 mile radius from either our Minneapolis or St. Paul location, you can go access our, our full inventory online there and place your orders there. Um, definitely worth doing. Um, yeah, so the curbside pickup delivery, or if you don't have access like that, which is totally fine, you can also just come to the store, hang out in your car, one of our team members will come to you and they will take your order and help you from there. And they'll help explain and walk you through the process. So we're trying to do some things, again, to help give that uh, access to, to good food that you need. Um, also, again, we're doing a temporary promotion where if you have an order for $50 or more, you get one of these free uh, liters of this beautiful olive oil. And this is really great. This is the Partana olive oil. Again, usually sells for $17.99 each. But $50 or more, you get one of these for free. So definitely check that out. We'll also, I'm sure, have more news and updates as the week goes on. So definitely make sure to pay attention, follow along. We'll let you know how things progress. Um, and again, I'm gonna try to do one of these every day this week. So if you're hanging out at home, definitely feel free to join us. Again, share the video with your friends. Let them know that we're doing this. And tune in, come and just hang out with us for a little while every day uh, while we make some food. It's pretty fun. Uh, and just kind of a way, again, to have a little bit of a break. So thank you all so much for tuning in. 
Again, yeah, the newsletter will go out as normal uh, tomorrow morning, so you'll see some updates there. We do have our lobster specials and stuff still that we're continuing over from last week uh, because lobster prices are good right now. So we've got $11.99 for the pound and a half, $13.99 for the two pound pluses. So if you're interested in those, they're all up on our website if you want to do the delivery for those as well. So check that out. Otherwise, definitely keep leaving your questions here. We'll address them through the day and then tomorrow we'll cook something different. But for now, thank you so much for tuning in and hanging out. We had a lot of people have fun. We'll show off one more time we got. So again, this is what we cooked today. So if you are again catching the tail end, you can go back and watch us put this together. Very simple, very nice, very elegant. Uh, and hardy. So thanks so much again for tuning in. We will see you hopefully tomorrow. Uh, again, questions, comments, feel free to leave them in the comment section or just message me directly. See you next week or tomorrow. <laughs>